This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky and I'm sitting here at a lovely round table with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Oh, thank you so much, thank David. Thank you so much. We are the Knights and Jessica. of the Round Table. Yes, we are. Ah, yeah, because we're sitting at a round table mm-hmm. and it's night time. That's true. <laughs> hey, what are the odds? I know. We're sitting under a lamp in Matt Stewart's lounge room. I feel like we're about to play a high stakes card game. Yes. You, you getting that vibe? That's when I'm wearing that see through green visor. <laughs> yeah, I love those. Yeah, and I'm a dog <laughs> in a painting. I'm smoking a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bulldog. <laughs> what are you? Oh, I'm rolling dice. You're a poodle, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Steven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sausage dog, please. Really, I'm just, we're sitting in the shadow of my uh, stop plate trophy from last week. All right, mm-hmm. mate, what's the, tell us what that's for. Obviously, you want to bring that up? <laughs> yeah. no, oh, now that you've mentioned it. Um, what's this trophy all about? It's just a little golf tournament, no big deal. 15 years in the making. I finally reached the summit. Have you never for won the before? For the second time. Oh. But How long between drinks? Uh, four or five years. Yeah, good. So that's, that's a good feeling. So you go out, how many people were playing? Look, that, I mean, numbers don't matter. It was just how me many this people? time. Three. <laughs> was it three? <laughs> it was seven. It was a small group this time. Last year we had 20. Oh, wow. Um, so my odds did increase mm. with those 13 people who were playing. So where'd you come last year? Uh, last year, I think I was still in the top handful. But top, I had, so you were top I had seven one of the, both years. I think I had my, <laughs> would it be like in my top half dozen scores of all time? I'm not a particularly good golfer. You just had a good day. Had a, had a yeah. Had a, played with a lot of luck. Made a lot of putts. Oh, I was hitting it real solid out there. Oh. <laughs> so who are you channeling here for people who don't like golf? Like uh, me, who's that? I uh, <laughs> I like to sleep around. Ah, uh, uh, okay. I, uh, Yogi Bear. <laughs> Yogi Bear. He loves to sleep around. <laughs> He's a real the famous slut. philanderer. <laughs> yeah, well, he could not put it away. <laughs> oh, picnic baskets and a sex. <laughs> You, is there a way that we could launch some sort of do go on uh, charity podcast based golf tournament? I'd love that. That would where be we invite dream other come podcasters true. from Melbourne, we yeah. compete somehow, we film it or something, and it's all for charity, Jess. What do you think? Oh, no, I'm up for that, but I don't want to play the golf. But can I just drive a golf buggy around? Yeah, you could be the official driver for the uh, Melbourne International Podcast Celebrity Golf yes. Charity Tournament. Yeah, do you know what my dad copyright? did? <laughs> yeah. My dad drove a golf cart, uh, basically like over a a ledge that fell into a um, sand. What's the sand, sand thing? Part? Bunker. A bunker. Sandwich. He had to jump out of the cart midair. An As it was open going face club sandwich. <laughs> uh, and he landed weirdly on his hip. A few months later, he got a hip replacement. And couldn't. Couldn't quite pinpoint where that pain had started. <laughs> I was like, Dad, do you reckon it's when you jumped out of a golf cart midair? And he went, oh, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> and that's my family. Sounds Your like dad is job. a maniac. Mm. Really sounds like an insurance job. He probably would have died if he hadn't jumped out, though, to be fair. So it was probably a good call. Speaking of travelling to sandy places. Yes, what a segue. We're we hitting up Brisbane. Is that where you're going with this? Brisbane doesn't. Oh, they've got a man-made beach, but it's not even on the coast, Brisbane. I was talking about Perth oh, okay. and Sydney. <laughs> Two beachy it's time places. to announce two more shows. <laughs> we are coming to Brisbane in less than a month now. First of all, this has been on sale for a couple of weeks now. We're hitting up the zoo, name of the venue in Fortitude Valley, on August the 11th. If you want to come down for a podcast and then a quiz show straight afterwards, so two shows in one, and then we're doing the same things. First of all, in Sydney, coming up there for the first time in over a year on Saturday, September the 21st. At the Giant Dwarf Theatre. Mm. Had a fantastic time there last year. So fun. We're back this time to take over. Because last night we did, last year we did the second half of the night. There was another show in the first half. And we came in. But we're taking over the whole night. We're doing the oh, podcast. Oh, cool. First of all. And then... This is news to Matt. Yeah. And then a bit of a quiz game show thing afterwards. Or something. We don't even know. Well, let's see how it goes in Brisbane first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before we lock in. Yeah, but you'll it get could two. Be stand up. It'll two, be stand-up. It could be... You'll get two shows. Could be me doing... Puppetry of the of my, earlobes. Really? I don't have a lot, but I can do a mean uh, <laughs> mattress. I can do a... Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, there, I'm doing it now. What do you reckon? Oh, I can, hey, I can you see sleep, the transformation? I can sleep on that. Yeah, you don't feel like having to lie down? I can do a dumpling. What do you reckon? Oh, that's good. Yeah. 
folding out a euro. So I mean, there's two tricks. As good as this is audioly, imagine it audio visually. Wow. <laughs> uh, so that's that's Sydney. We're yeah. announcing that show. First of all, tickets are on sale right now. They went on sale today. The day the episode came out and then we are coming over as matt just said to perth for our first ever show over in western australia people have been bugging us for a long time so we're really hoping you do get behind this because it's a long way for us to go it's a long way we are performing i mean we top. have been to thailand and the uk before perth but and people came so <laughs> thank goodness yeah uh perth the comedy lounge fantastic venue you got there sunday november the third we're coming for you baby An all afternoon extravaganza come on down Yes, I cannot wait. So excited for all that. Right, that's right. So tickets are on sale for all those shows, Brisbane, Sydney and Perth at dogoonpod.com. I just love to travel. Yeah, I love to travel. With friends. Well. I love to live, I love to laugh, I love to love. And I, I love you, Perth and Brisbane and Sydney. I do prefer great. to travel with friends, but you guys will do. <laughs> right, well, oh. I'm, sorry, I'm inviting <laughs> friends <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, to perfect. fly with me. Perfect. I was assuming you two were friends of mine. I count you that way. Oh, do you? Jess, you've also Why? Jess, my good friend, you've also um, been working on a, a merchandise shop for us. I have, yes. You're putting those reta- that retail experience to the test. I never knew that that would come in handy, and oh boy, has it. That's great. So for a little while, we've had a red bubble, um, but yeah, where things are printed on demand, but it's not quite as. We can't control the quality. Yeah. So it comes up with like a bunch of different options for you, but they don't always come out super well. So what I've done is, because we had so much merch, especially like all T-shirts basically from uh, live shows and stuff like that, I've put them online. You can buy them now, sh- T-shirts that were previously exclusively available at live shows are available on the internet. Amazing. So cool. And so there'll be a link to that in the show description. Probably. Yeah. All of our, uh, um, check our socials and stuff. We're working on updating that on our website yeah, as well. It's a big cartel. It is a big cartel. And, um, that we're part of. Basically, I'll be managing that um, for the most part. So um, if, you want an order, if you want a T-shirt, you can absolutely grab one and I'll send it out to you. So Jess will hand send that out to you, yeah, which will. is quite cool. And also, you She'll also throw it to you just if also, you're close enough. Yeah. Uh, the Dugon Frisbee. And you've also... Ordered some little Dugon cards. Yeah. Which are quite nice that you'll get in the mail with. Yeah. You get a little, your order. Get a little thank you. Which uh, is cool. While we're plugging, just a couple of last quick plugs. Uh, Jess, we're doing a show in Brisbane. Yes. Uh, just the week after the mm-hmm. Brisbane Live do go on called Razzle Dazzle. And it's a stand-up show. It's, it's basically trying out new material, but it should be loose and fun. It'll be very fun. And bringing a little bit of that old school Razzle Dazzle. Yes. And Wait, which one are you? I think I'm Darzel. Yeah, I agree. You're definitely Razzle. I'm a, I'm a Razzle. <laughs> I want to have you. I'm a no, cheeky Razzle. No, that's right. That's right. That's right. And there's also just the last uh, bits and pieces of my merch that I, was, uh, t- I had at my live shows earlier this year, including Primates, Beanies, and some enamel pins on my face. And, uh, um, just to translate for our Canadian listeners, those are toques. Oh, toques. Yeah, toques. I saw someone mention that. and They're I called Beanies toques over there. I had there. to Google toques? that. Which I love. I thought it was toques. No, I've heard uh, on Nathan for you. He sold because he's Canadian. He referred to them as toque. Took. Cool. Right. Yeah, I heard Justin Bieber and Avril Lavigne talking about it with mm-hmm. the singer from Nickelback. Yeah, really and sure. they, were, they were hanging out with Leonard Cohen and uh, Neil Young and uh, Michael Bublé, <laughs> Is and that also off I love that. Uh, they were all talking to a man who Dion. was riding a moose, oh. and they were all saying uh, Ryan Reynolds. They were saying Ryan Reynolds wears a toque. <laughs> So, yeah, so that, that, <laughs> After all anec- that you anecdote it. probably helps. Um, but you can go to mattstewartcomedy.com slash shop, I think. I should have checked that before. Anyway, that's so many plugs. We should start the show. Yeah, let's start this goddamn podcast, which, if you haven't heard before, tuning in for the first time, what we do is we usually take it in turns here to report on a topic often suggested by a listener, and whoever's in charge of the report, the other two people, they have no idea what they're about to talk about. And this week, Matt... You're in charge. It's so good to be in charge, grabbing the reins. I'm going to ride this moose all the way to the Canadian border of joy. Right. The Canadian border of joy being America? Yeah. Right. Ah. Uh, which is where this uh, some of this report is based. Fantastic. Good. In America. Here yep. we go. We always start with a question. We do. And my question this week is, who <laughs> is the most... <laughs> I mean, it's pretty funny so <laughs> far. <laughs> who is the most... Jess... That's pretty funny. <laughs> Jess, you got an early call on this? Nah, the cat just licked my hand. It was a particularly needy cat hanging around. <laughs> it got really rough tongue. What's the cat's name? Penny. Penny. Oh, good name for a cat. Hello, Penny. <laughs> oh, you like me. 
The people who uh, were enjoying the plugs will be enjoying this. <laughs> So I think just to get on with get the on show. With I'm so it. sorry. Penny will be appearing live at the zoo in Brisbane with us. Um, August 11th. Question. Question to get on topic. Penny, you can answer this as well. <laughs> Who is the most controversial person in the world of cyber security? <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> um, do, you know, do you know any, his name? And there's a, I've given you a, oh, yeah, actually. His surname is the name of a, of a still very big cyber security <laughs> brand. Is. is it a McAvee? It is John McAvee. <laughs> Definitely thought it was Julian Assange. Or McAfee or oh, really? Mac, McAfee. Mac, would ah, you say McAfee? I think I always like said the McAfee. Little yellow shield maybe. Yeah. I think that, that might be pro- Norton. You've probably deleted off your computer. Definitely. Yeah. Graham Norton also has a competing yeah. brand. And or is uh, it John, John Adblocker? John Adblocker. <laughs> He's my favourite. <laughs> he does great work. One million ads blocked. Thanks, John. How are you doing it? How are you doing? <laughs> Whoa. So, so uh, this Penny's on the table now. <laughs> you don't ha- Honestly, Penny, <laughs> you don't have to do that. I did say uh, we were, been very like we're gambling. Generous, so I've yes. gone all in with Matt's cat. <laughs> Put it on the table. She does what I do uh, in that she just like bashes her head into you for attention. <laughs> Yeah, you, you buck us. Yeah, I do. You're a bucker. All right, so John McAvee. So, yeah. Jess, do you know anything about Because I've only had no. one story about him and it did make me laugh and I hope you'll be covering it. Okay, because there's stories that will make you maybe laugh but also stories that will make you feel sad about the world. He's done some bad things, oh, allegedly. No. Anyway. Oh, okay, well, the, this thing, uh, can I just also stipulate, is also terrible. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, you've heard a terrible but funny story. Yeah, I mean, funny because it wasn't me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess that's okay. a good warning for everyone who doesn't like light being made of uh, terrible things. Terrible things. And let's not forget that Matt did do the story about a man who was uh, banged to death by a horse a few weeks ago. <laughs> so he literally has no filter anymore. Uh, this was suggested by Michael Apostolides. Apostolides. Oh, I reckon that second one's better. And Finlay Williams and Fabian, no surname. Here we no go. No surname is an interesting one. No, I reckon if your name is Fabian, you can go solo Monica, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good call. How Ch- many Fabians do you know? I've never met one. <laughs> Don't want to. John David McAfee. We're going to say McAfee? Oh, uh, you've seen it written down more recently than I have, so you should go with what I John David said McAfee. John David McAfee was born on the 18th of September, 1945, on a US Army base in Gloucestershire in the UK, to an English mother... I'm going to have to stop you there because you'll get tweets. Yeah. Gloucestershire. Oh, fuck. You will get tweets. I'm so yeah. sorry to everyone out there. But, but was that McAfee, however? Mm. Sorry about both. Um, Gl- Gloucestershire in the UK to an English mother and an American father who was stationed there. When he was young, the family moved to Virginia in the United States. Oh, Virginia. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. And his father was reportedly an alcoholic, died when... McAfee was still very young, about 15. Uh, he was a bright student and studied mathematics at Roanoke College, oh. receiving his bachelor's degree in 1967, the summer of love almost. <laughs> what, um, what was the summer of love, 69? Of course. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, do you have to ask? Oh, my Lord. I didn't even mean that. <laughs> you have to ask. <laughs> that was oh. the dinner of love <laughs> for two. <laughs> Uh, during his first couple of decades out of college, McAfee worked at NASA. NASA? <laughs> Am I saying that right? <laughs> As a program direct, uh, a programmer, program director, programmer <laughs> for a couple of years. The space program. As well as working at Univac and Xerox. Oh, what years was he? Is it, this is just after that. Yeah, so I guess it's. Did he work on the space mission? I, on the moon? Planning? I think he was working at, at a NASA ba- based in. New York, so I'm, I think it wasn't necessarily... They do other stuff than launch rockets at the moon, right? What else do also they do? Launch rockets at Mars. <laughs> uh, during, a wide range. <laughs> of rockets. Yeah. During the 80s, McAfee became aware of a computer virus commonly known as Brain. You know this? <laughs> brain. According to centrion.com.au, the first computer virus for MS-DOS was Brain and was released in 1986. It would overwrite the boot sector on a floppy disk and prevent the computer from booting. It was written by two brothers from Pakistan and was originally designed as a copy protection. Whatever all that means. <laughs> right, so it was actually meant for good. I, that's what it sounds like. Copy protection sounds good. Did you good. write whatever all that means? No. Oh. 
Dave, check his computer. Don't. <laughs> we got a note at some point from someone saying, can you stop saying what you have and haven't written? No one cares. I don't think we've ever had that. That's you trying okay. to stop us from making <laughs> yeah, That note has you. never existed. No one's ever tweeted that. I wrote it in a pad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show it to you later. <laughs> McAfee was one of the first to become aware of it and how it worked, which also meant he was able to design software that was able to beat it. He has said that he wrote the antivirus program in a day and a half and that 4 million people were using it within a month. And this is how his company, McAfee Associates, the antivirus software company, was born. Right. Put a sound effect in there and post, sorry. (laughs) The company boomed and in 1992 was incorporated. A couple of years later, McAfee resigned and he sold his stake, reportedly making $100 million. Whoa. Uh, though McAfee has since told ABC News in America that his fortune was worth much more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just a correction there. I'm not worth $100 million. I'm worth $200 <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, He seems, yeah, it's, and it's hard to know. He's always like, yeah, million. I was playing you back then. It was that He does that a lot. Ah. It, he'll he'll um, rewrite history a bit or and say, yeah, no, nah, I was... That was because I wanted you to think I didn't have that much money back then, but actually... Sounds like a trustworthy man. Mm. From there, he moved into his next venture, which was a chat program called Tribal Voice. Ever heard of it? No. Neither. <laughs> but he sold it for $17 million soon after. Wow. I'm guessing Although it's partially 17. based on his own name, but it, I think it, it might have been... This is a dot-com boom type thing, right? Yeah, and also um, messaging services, I guess it was... It, so I saw somewhere that he was um, an early influencer in that, so maybe that's what that was. When asked by the ABC journalist uh, what he did with all the money, he replied, I wasted it, like everybody who has money. Uh, more specifically, he had nine homes built and bought lots of weird and wonderful stuff, including aeroplanes, expensive artwork, and a dinosaur skull. <laughs> <laughs> What is with rich people and dinosaur skulls? Remember that, there was that story of Nicolas Cage and Leonardo DiCaprio both bidding, having a bidding war over a dinosaur skull? And then it turned out that it was it had been stolen or something so they had to give it back anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I was spending like 300 grand or something on it. Is that in that Mesa episode about Superman maybe? Yeah, maybe. That sounds about right. Because he was one... What, he yeah, talked he, a lot he about bought Nicolas the Cage. original Superman comic. Yeah, and then it was uh, stolen because yeah. he left the key in the lock. Great episode, get back and listen. Uh, he, he also opened a retreat in Colorado where he rebranded himself as a yoga guru. He left all the tech stuff behind. He'd sold his companies. Now he's a <laughs> yoga guru. The next big thing, yoga. <laughs> yeah. He wrote heaps of books, like half a dozen or something books about yoga and, and how it's a great way of life and stuff like that. It, yep. And he spent his time leading yoga sessions and speaking about the meaning of life. Okay. This uh, feels like a turn for the positive. Yeah. Um, According to a quote on Vice.com, a former student spoke of the retreat saying, everything was free. You would think that this guy was amazingly generous and kind, but he was getting something out of it. He was interested in being the center of attention. He was surrounded by people around him who didn't have any money and were depending on him and he could control them. So that they... They spin it as a, it's almost like a negative. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it was fine up until the, the control part. It's yeah. Like, oh, it's fine for a lonely person to have friends come around. Oh, control. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. A cult. Okay. <laughs> yep. That's weird. Um, but he grew bored of that enlightened lifestyle pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he found a new obsession, which was aero trekking. And according to the Vice article, aero trekking is the practice of flying lightweight aircraft called trikes just a few feet off the ground. <laughs> I can't believe it didn't take off more than that, <laughs> a few feet. But, um, yeah, I'd never heard of it. It sounds pretty tame, right? Um, and he, he encouraged his followers to take it up and he opened a center for the sport in New Mexico. Hmm. Um, so he's trying to get the yoga people to I, yeah, I jump ship so. to another <laughs> yeah. thing. Hey, I've got another thing. This yoga? Will you like yoga? <laughs> well, what about like a mild extreme sport? <laughs> yeah. Where you could jump out of this at any time a la John Perkins in a <laughs> golf cart. <laughs> He'd love this. Honestly, you can jump out of anything at any time if you want. I could jump out of this seat right now. <laughs> you oh, believe in it. Actually, I'm kind of pinned in against this. Well, I probably couldn't. But um, You could do almost anything you I want. You could do almost anything I want. Not this. Not this, Not now. but almost anything else. It's just, so it's seriously just a few feet off the ground. That's, what, that's how that Vice article it's described it. It's like a hoverboard. So it, sound, it, it doesn't. that doesn't sound dangerous, right? But apparently it is more dangerous than it sounds because... 
it led to the death of his 22 year old nephew and a 61 year old passenger. What? Which I, yeah, I can't. I guess unless it's moving really fast or. Well, it must be if it's flying, right? But. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, not you can fly slowly. <laughs> yeah, but not like 10k an hour. True. Can that you? is still pretty fast to fall onto yes, the ground, right. especially if it's rocky terrain or something. Uh, these deaths led to a lawsuit being filed against him, and as a result, he liquidated his many assets and fled to Belize. Oh. Now, have we got to the thing that you found funny yet? No. I'm interested as to what it is. <laughs> um, and also a bit scared as to what yeah. you find funny. Remember, it's Dave. We're None of the about. deaths so far have Hilarious. been amusing to you. Oh, sorry, sorry, death. Yes, <laughs> very good. Ha <laughs> ha. Well played. So he fled to Belize. You, you wouldn't have been a geography expert. You would know exactly where that is, and would have known, uh, unlike me, before this week, that it is a country in Central America. Yes, that's right. Um, he noted at the time, or not long after. Uh, a judgment in the States is not valid down in Belize. So people are suing him over those deaths. He's basically fleeing that judgment. Um, he told the media at the time, though, that he his fortune was hit by the global financial crisis. Or was that does that time out right? No, that might not be quite right. But he, he was hit by a big downturn in the market. And that's why I had to sell his many properties and belongings. He invited the media to film the auction. So there's footage of... He seems to have a camera around him all the time. There's so much footage oh. of him through all this time. You can see him through the like the computer nerd era. Um, this auction he's there at. Uh, <laughs> the th- computer th- nerd era. There's <laughs> footage of him... At, you know what they're like. At the nerds. yoga the Yeah, there yoga are. There's years. footage of him leading yoga things on his... He obviously was very open to having cameras around all the time. Um so the media came and saw him auction off all his stuff and he told the media then that he'd lost over 90% of his fortune. Ooh. Um, he has since admitted that he liquidated his assets because people would stop suing him if they thought he was broke. <laughs> Saying, okay. I've had 200 lawsuits in my life because my name is John McAfee. No, I didn't lose everything. I wanted to stop people from trying to sue me. People don't sue him if he's got no money is what his theory was. I'm going to sue a poor person, are you? But it's also like I don't – he's the kind of untrustworthy narrator that you go, are, are you just saying that now? Mm, which bit is a lie? Yeah. yeah. It's hard, just hard to tell with him what, yep. what, where reality starts and stops. Um, anyway, he started a new a new, new life in Belize. Um, so is this like – this is basically his fourth reinvention. Yeah, he, he's just always restless and reinvent. I mean, he's – by this stage, he's been he's in his fifties, so it's not like he's a kid still. But yeah, he, he seems to change up pretty regularly, and and like n- not super connected things either. Mm, very different. Uh, in Belize, again, and a wild sort of uh, left hand turn. He started a company experimenting with making antibi- antibiotics from plants in the jungle. Uh, his company called. Quorum X focused on a field of microbiology called anti-quorum sensing. And according to the Vice article, it is whereby you fight bacteria, not by killing it outright, but by interrupting its chemical pathways. Mm. So obviously this comes on from aero trekking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously. I uh, first of all had the idea whilst I was a yoga teacher, then I developed it whilst flying two feet off the ground mm. at 100 miles per hour. And now I've perfected it yep. in the jungle. Um, the article... <laughs> it's a tale as old as time. Yeah, so. obviously. I can't believe I had to explain <laughs> yeah, that. The article goes on to say that the operation was led by Dr. Alison Adon- Adonisio, a hard Harvard researcher who, according to McAfee, was already aware of one such plant. Uh, by early 2010, McAfee claimed they'd found six locally, uh, which, according to the Vice article, was a blatant lie. Oh. <laughs> um. At first, so um, Adonisio was interviewed in this documentary I watched last night, like a feature-length documentary called Gringo about John McAfee, and it um, she features in it pretty heavily, and she uh, talks about her time there, which was pretty awful. Um, she says at first she thought it was her dream job, you know, a rich backer was going to fund the research that she wanted to do. Mm. 
Um, but pretty quickly things got weird. Tale as old as time. Mm, yeah. Um, Don't trust rich people who want to give you money to do the thing you really want to do. Like that comes with a big catch, surely. But when they arrive and say, I'm here because I, I've, I've escaped killing two people in a plane you've never heard of. Yeah. Okay. Also, I used to teach yoga. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to chill later, yeah. let me know. <laughs> okay. But more importantly, I want to give you unlimited cash to do that thing you do. Okay. Yeah, that's the bit she focused on. Yeah. She, she said that like he he was he grew impatient with her like not getting the results he thought would happen a lot quicker, and then um, he'd get her to do things like put coloured dyes in beakers for photos. Say, look, oh, look, I'm looking at this blue glass <laughs> beaker of liquid. We're making progress, and that's why he's saying we've found six plants and things are moving. When, but it, it was him just going, let's fake it a bit. Fire and and she said, "That's this is not cool. And he's like, no, no, this is just business. It's just business. You've got to keep the buzz going sort of thing. That's how, how she tells him. Then, But, it, I mean, that that was sort of the lighter stuff. It got more fucked. She, um, no, not green in the beaker. Uh, no. Matt, please. No, not red in the beaker. And, there was red, yes. Oh, my oh. God. He's a monster. <laughs> um, he insisted that she live with him. She, he said he, there was no uh, accommodation for her. He had to live in it. And this is a quote from her. She said, um, he tried to convince me that love doesn't exist. So I might as well just sleep. Uh, I might as well just give in and sleep with all these crazy circus folk. This is a, um, her being interviewed by Gizmodo. I was naive about who and what Mr. McAfee really is. Um, so who are the circus folk that she's referring to there? Oh, I just said all the, he's sort of hangers on and stuff. Oh, okay. Mm. Right, right. Uh, I think I mentioned it coming up, but he's sort of got he's got a harem of of young girlfriends, um, and yeah, and and uh, also he hires a bunch of um, sort of ex cons uh, as well. He's a lonely man; he just likes company. Um, but yeah, uh, she's also since spoken to ABC News and filmmaker Nanette Burstein. Uh, on her documentary about McAfee, the one called Gringo, The Dangerous Life of John McAfee. And on both, Adonisio alleges that McAfee drugged and raped her Jeez. when she tried to quit the project. Um, soon after, she fled home to Pennsylvania and got in contact with FBI about her allegations, though the FBI told her it was not within their jurisdiction, which I, I get. Is it, I, yeah, I don't understand the FBI. They're obviously mainly America-based. But, yeah... Um, she she t- tells the story in a fair bit of detail. He, she's sipping on the orange juice. She's like, I can't believe how I feel like such an idiot. It tasted weird. I made a joke mm. about it. Like, oh, it's weird. You can't get because the town they were living in was called Orange Walk, and apparently she she said weird. You can't get normal tasting oranges in Orange Walk. Oh. She's rem- and then she just so comes trusting. To the next, yeah, yeah. And she she plays like that, but obviously this has messed her up. Yeah, big time. Can, I mean, obviously, but you can see it. Uh, he refutes all these claims. Of, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Uh, and says that she's loopy, basically. Right. Well, I guess that's that then, isn't it? He seems to get away with everything, you know, allegedly get away with everything because he's never really been charged with any of these serious things that he's been accused of. Um, if journalists ever get to ask him about any of the allegations, he'll brush it off by the same accusers of being paid off or they're crazy or they're some sort of conspiracy or whatever. But like the whole reason he was in Belize in the first place seems to be that he was fleeing legal trouble in the US about the aero trekking death. So Belize, is, it sounds like it's it's like a kind of um, lawless place, but it's not. There's, there's cops around um, and they ended up raiding his lab in 2012. I can't believe how recent all of this is. Mm. Um, uh, the Belize, uh, Belizean. Police, the, the, uh, they're like, I forget what they're called, but they're like the gang. Uh, there's a, a police section called the gang enforcement section or something. Right. And they raided his lab in 2012, believing it was being used to manufacture methamphetamine. Um, Vice reported that the cops found 20 grand in cash, a lab stocked with chemistry equipment. 
a small armory's worth of firearms, including a seven pump action shotguns, one single action shotgun, two nine millimeter millimeter, millimeter pistols, two hundred seventy shotgun cartridges, thirty nine millimeter mm-hmm. pistol rounds, and twenty thirty eight uh, rounds. Vexingly for the police, the article says, all of this was actually legal. The guns were licensed, and the lab appeared not to be manufacturing jugs, but was jugs. <laughs> Jugs it or drugs. A, it wasn't a jug factory. No. Guys, ooh, bad ooh, news. Ooh, they've been ooh, making ooh, vases. Ooh, <laughs> totally illegal vases. Yeah. No jugs. I'm afraid you've only got a license for jugs. That was me playing a jug, by the way. Big oh, clay jug. Simpsons reference stuff. there. Yeah, finally. Never ever stop in the middle of a hoedown. <laughs> <laughs> Just, somebody posted recently in the Patreon group of like... You two making a Simpsons reference and me just looking perplexed. And I was like, I get them. I just don't enjoy them. <laughs> I just don't feel the need to put them into every conversation. Weirdo. <laughs> yeah, what is wrong with you? Yeah, I don't know. Are you from our generation? No. I'm an old soul. Uh, <laughs> you prefer MASH. I love MASH. Suicide is painless. Yeah, Hawkeye, it's a, what feel a babe. Good, feel good comedy. So the they were the lab appeared not to be manufacturing drugs uh. or drugs, but uh, antibacterial compound. Uh. So exactly what he said. <laughs> but also, God, it looks sus to have that much cash and guns. Why yeah. does he have any of that? So I imagine it is a pretty. It is one of the most dangerous countries in the region. Yeah, I think it's like. Murder capital for a while there. And he's so, su- oh, super paranoid. Did they get knocked off the top? Yeah, I think they might. Top spot. So, so, Damn so. it. By yeah. Gary, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> so, Just um, a joke there, obviously. Gary's A paradise. beautiful place. I cannot wait to visit. An oasis. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I imagine that if you've got like a big crew, especially full of ex-cons, it's kind of natural to have those guns mm. in that part of the world anyway. Um. So I was, I was kind of mentioned this before, but McAfee had a harem of young girlfriends in Belize mm-hmm. and he seemed to have young girlfriends the whole way through. Uh, it came up a lot reading about him. Most articles mentioned, depending on when the article was from, different girlfriends he had, but he had half a dozen or so in Belize. At the same time? Yes. Oh. Uh, in the in the documentary I watched, a lot of them were interviewed in it, and they seemed. I think it was sort of at first it was the money, but they all seemed to end up falling from a bit. And then there's this one uh, cut where they they all sort of basically say, "I was his favorite. He spent the most time with me." And just one after the other, they all said something similar about that. Uh. So there was sort of like obviously some sort of competition for his affection Stockholm as well. Stockholm syndrome. Um, he in. Apparently often involved with women as young as teenagers. And in one interview I saw with him, he stresses that they're all over the age of consent though, which is reassuring uh, when a seven-year-old man has to yeah. say, well, boy, you got to understand they're all like old enough yeah, legally, legally at least. Yeah. Certainly not emotionally mature enough, but legally I'm allowed. Yeah. <laughs> That's so gross. Um, Ethically, it's a huge, big misuse of their trust. But legally, <laughs> I love a legal loophole. Yeah, and it'd be like <laughs> so in in the frame of mind where you're like saying in a, to a news, you're yeah. being interviewed on the news. You're like, oh, don't worry. If you have to say age of consent, yeah, they're you... too young. That's just a general rule for you out there. That's good to get those rules out there. Yeah. McAfee threw his money around a lot in Belize. He donated millions to the police department in particular, which oh, obviously oh, seems nice. a bit a sus. Nice donation. <laughs> yeah. Just likes to support the police. So gave the chief of police a brown paper bag donation, said buy yourself something nice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and said, how old's your daughter? <laughs> in, the, in the documentaries, is obviously um, not painting the nicest picture of him, but they... They, um, I don't think the maker of that doco is a big fan of it somehow. <laughs> but, I mean, he's giving also giving all this um, content yeah. for her. But they showed all the, like, heaps and heaps of tasers, bullets, guns. He donated all this stuff to them. Wow. Mm. Dave, what language would they speak in Belize? Uh, Spanish. Thank you, Dave. See. Si. <laughs> si, si. uh, he also showed increasing signs of paranoia whilst there and became very security conscious. Loco. 
hiring a small army of local ex-cons to work as his p- personal security team, Ooh. as well as a pack of guard dogs for his property and all sorts of weaponry, as we talked about before. Um, he dressed his security team in army fatigues and had them patrol the main street, apparently. <laughs> so when you say dress them, it sounds like he's personally dressing <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah. All right. They're like his Rodrigo, Joe come Dolph's. over here. <laughs> Time to put on your little mittens. <laughs> 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 Khaki mittens, <laughs> and it's so that it, it's got big truck, like big Ute sort of American style, big Ute trucks, mm. and they drive through the main strip with all the uh, basically looks like a mini militia sitting in the back of his Ute armed to the teeth. And it uh, Why in the would doco, they drive? it said that he enforced a a um uh what do you call it when people aren't allowed <laughs> out after a certain amount of time curfew curfew enforced a curfew for the locals and stuff, which sounds what? a bit. Yeah, I know. I don't understand either. Didn't seem to make a lot of sense. Why does he get to do that? I don't know. I want to do that. I'm going to enforce a curfew in my apartment building. You should do it. All you have to do is get a local militia. To be fair, they're all old. Yeah, but it's more of a power move. Yeah. They're enforcing their own. You make them not be able to go to bed. Yeah. You blast hip hop. 2 a.m. Yeah. Have we, has the, the funny thing still hasn't happened? So curious as to what it is. Yeah, what do you find funny, Dave? No, What's don't put that pressure on me. I've heard it like a an anecdotal story. I haven't watched any of these horrifying <laughs> documentaries. I didn't realise what a bad person he was. Uh, so don't put this on me. According to the Gringo Sorry. documentary, uh, when a local man named David Middleton was suspected of robbing McAfee's home, McAfee allegedly... I mean, everything I'm saying is allegedly. Can I do a blanket allegedly? Of course. He's never been... Off the record. Yeah, I don't think the law's never caught up with him. This is so. very much on mic, on record. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, a local man named David Middleton was suspected of robbing McAfee's home. And uh, McAfee allegedly organised for Middleton to be abducted by some hired thugs and before taking him and stabbing and tasering him what? within an inch of his life. So, as a message sort of thing. So what was that the crime? Was the idea. What was he saying he'd done? Robbed he'd, him. He'd robbed. He'd broken into his uh, his house. Right. Whoa, that's messed up. Yeah. On the docker, there's a the the one of his workers says, yeah, he paid me to organise. Um, I went into town and I picked up this group of huge guys and got them to, to you know, send a message basically. All right, you got me. That's the funny bit. <laughs> Classy. They then pushed him out of the car in the middle of town, right in front of a bunch of locals. They rushed to his assistance, um, but even still, he slipped into a coma and later <gasps> died in a hospital. Oh, my God. Oh, just, to, just to clarify, that was not the funny bit. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, that's basically... So, that's a murder charge, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that is not the only death that McAfee has been linked to from his time in Belize. Oh, um, my God. An American expat named Gregory Fall had moved to Belize for the quiet life. Unfortunately for him, he moved a couple doors down from McAfee, who lived a far from quiet life. His pack of dogs in particular caused Fall a lot of grief with their incessant barking. Apparently Fall complained and said that he was going to do something about the dogs if uh, if, if McAfee didn't. Um, not too long after, the nine dogs were found dead, <gasps> poisoned by meat that had been thrown over the fence. So... I, I think it, it seems like that was Fall who did that. Within, Allegedly. Within a day of the dog massacre, Fall was found dead in his apartment. <gasps> um, the official police report says that the cops found Fall's body lying face up in a pool of blood with an apparent gunshot wound on the upper rear part of his head. Oh, my God. Apparently, the chances of, mur- uh, of convicting murderers in Belize is very low. Um, CSI Belize is fairly bare bones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and unless there is an eyewitness or a confession, the crimes are likely to go unpunished. Apparently the murder conviction rates are around 3%. What? Yes. Far out, but also, I, yeah, pack of dogs are very annoying. It doesn't mean you kill them. Yeah. That's... I'm not saying you deserve to be murdered. Sorry, but I was just thinking the, about neither that Neither did again. the dogs. No, definitely not. Yeah, it's all. There's no, n- no, nothing in that people, story is nice, is none it? None of these people deserve to die. Let yeah. me just put that out there. I, Can I, I do that? Yeah. So Belize City is the uh, in 2011 was the f- had the fourth highest murder rate of any city in the world. Right. And Belize is the third highest nas- national murder rate in the world. 
Yeah, so. right. Three percent. Really so well it's a high murder yeah. rate and a low a low conviction. conviction three percent of a lot of people is still a few people. So all that being said, he was still the police's main suspect, and they they wanted to uh, arrest him basically. Um, but he still denies any involvement, um, saying that it's all stitched up by the Belize government. And because of this, he decided to flee the country before they could get him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Checks out. Classic innocent man. He loves to flee. Doesn't want would, to flee. I wouldn't know where to flee. Where would you flee? Uh, probably across the, the Guatemalan border. Okay. Is but, that what he does? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, asking you, Matt Stewart. Right. Fleeing from Melbourne. From here? Oh, jeez. Oh, doesn't everyone go to Darwin? Is that where people... Oh, you're still staying within the country. Oh, okay. Where I mean, the you? feds can still get you. Oh, yeah. But then, like, New Zealand, that's convenient. Oh, yeah, I like It's a New shorter Zealand. flight than Darwin. No, you got to go on non extradition country, people. Yeah. Belize? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Belize. Your Russias, your Spains. Mm. Oh, Spain? I got robbed in yeah. Spain. <laughs> Why do you think? All the crims go there. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it's a beautiful country. I've been many times and I love it. Anyway, Matt, do your one. Yeah, but I've, someone will try to rob me in Spain as well. They had their hand in my pocket. Oh. Were you like, oh, this guy's getting pretty friendly. <laughs> Back pocket? Kind of a uh, cute little bum fr- grab? No, front pocket. Oh, that's weird. Wow. And you uh, thought it was local custom, went into his pocket? He was like, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, then we walked down the, the street, <laughs> hand in pocket. <laughs> It was, it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> I yeah. miss him every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he was the main suspect. He he wanted to flee. And this yeah. is what he said. Um, this is his reasoning. He said, under no circumstances am I going to... Under no circumstances am I going to willingly talk to the police in this country. You can say I'm paranoid about it, but they will kill me. There is no question. They've been trying to get me for months. They want to silence me. I'm not well liked by the prime minister, and I think I think this is true because there was footage that was played in the documentary, and other I've seen it a few times of the prime minister, Dean Barrow, calling McAfee bonkers. Oh, okay. <laughs> he goes, the, he is delusional. The, he's like, I'd almost say he's bonkers. It's it's funny language from a prime minister, that but is. he's he just he almost felt like sounded like he was, fe- he was just like, I've had this enough. Guy. <laughs> He sounds like he'd be hard work, you know? Mm. Yeah, he's, just because he's, he's so paranoid, the, the theories are always pretty big. Mm. But, you know, if he's if he's telling the truth about everything, some wild things going on. Mm. Um, so now on the run, McAfee was able to escape over the border to Guatemala. Oh. Uh, and after being on the run for about a month, he agreed to meet for an interview with a vice journalist. When that journalist met him, they interviewed, they took a, a photo together the journalist uploaded that photo and inadvertently gave away their location. <laughs> the as he didn't, the he didn't delete the geolocation <gasps> metadata. And that led to McAfee being arrested by Guatemalan officials soon after <laughs> for entering the country illegally. Oh, dear. Uh, That's awkward. One of his girlfriends hooked him up uh, with her uncle, who was a top lawyer, um, and he was going to help fight extradition to Belize. His lawyer told him that he wouldn't be able to file the appeal until 3 p.m. that afternoon, though, telling him that in the hours until then, he was vulnerable to being booted back to Belize. So Why? soon after, McAfee collapsed on the floor of an apparent heart attack and he was rushed to hospital. <laughs> oh, my God. Did he fake a heart attack? But as the clock ticked over 3 p.m., he made a miraculous recovery, oh my God. <laughs> having avoided deportation. Asked later by ABC News if he'd faked it, he replied... Sure, I faked it. What would you have done? Okay, well, at least he's honest about it. Yeah. Because it feels like he's just so full of shit. Yeah, that he might... No, I, I did. I just had a what do you heart attack. How dare you? I had a heart you? attack till 3 p.m. It was very... I was... Of the, my life, it flashed before my but eyes. But he, he, loves, he loves telling stories of smart things he did. I tricked yeah. him. I outsmarted him. Yeah, right. He likes it when he wins. He, yeah, not saying I got lucky from getting unwell. No, I did that on purpose. Mm. I told my heart to attack. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't a fake heart attack. I mean, the heart attack was real, but I was in control the yeah. whole time. Uh, he wasn't deported to Belize because of this, um, but he was instead deported to Miami. And he sort of made it sound like 
he that was what he wanted. He he, he was going, oh, they forced me on this plane in Miami. He's like, yeah, I want to go to Miami. <laughs> yeah, he heard that Will Smith song. Yeah. And he just wanted to get there. He wanted to check it out. In West Philadelphia, born yeah. and raised. Miami's a lot closer to West Philadelphia than Guatemala. Mm. Mm. First step. Mm. <laughs> so arriving in Miami, he met his future wife, Janice, that day. What? Uh, she recounted this story in an interview with BlackEnterprise.com saying... I met John the night he was deported from Guatemala. He looked as defeated as I felt. I think we recognised in each other the same feelings of loneliness and emptiness. When he was deported from Guatemala, the government of Belize had illegally seized all of his property and bank accounts, so he literally left with the clothes on his back. One thing led to another, and I soon found myself on a road trip across the country with him. It was one of the most beautiful times of my life. John displayed a knowledge and a worldly kind of experience that captivated me. I've been with him ever since. Oh, Janice. So how do they meet? At a restaurant? I don't know. He just... Was he, he got, not under arrest? I know. He got deported and then straight to a restaurant. <laughs> and then know. road trip. Yeah. That's so romantic. That is hot. <laughs> the, um, that, that interview also asked her if the allegations against McAfee made her weary of marrying him. And she answered... No, not at all. The allegations against my husband are nothing more than so-called journalists and biographers sensationalizing my husband's story in order to make a name for themselves. And is she saying this to a journalist? Yeah. Good. But also she she met him after all this stuff, so she's just taken his word for it as well. Yeah. Less than 10% of what is written about my husband is true, and most of it is written without him even giving an interview. The media has told so many lies about my husband, it's disgusting. Anyone that truly knows John knows that he's, he has the biggest heart and he has a genuine love for people. And the biggest wallet. <laughs> he's so wealthy. But is he still wealthy or has he lost it all? Uh, now, yeah, he's still doing okay. Uh, at this point, though, according to her, he had nothing left. But I think he had something. Um she goes on to say what actually started his war with Belize is that he was giving money to the locals instead of donating, in inverted commas, to the government. He opened several different businesses in Belize and hired only the locals to run them. He gave so many Belizeans an opportunity to earn a steady income. He never took a dime from any of the businesses and all the profits went directly to the locals. Millions of dollars. The government officials didn't like that. So he made the decision to take his story to the international press to speak about the corruption in the government and he was labelled a drug-addled, child-molesting, crazy man. So that's what that's her story and I guess by extension that was the story he told her. Yeah. The government I'd be, I'd were after me. I'd be wanting to see some of the paperwork for those businesses. Apparently, I mean, I think he did do a lot of that stuff but I don't think the government necessarily... Well, like, will give us the money. Yeah, or we're going to make up... Weird yeah. and like real specific and extensive yeah. stories about you with a lot of people who will interview about it. Yes. Um, in the Gringo documentary, one of McAfee's ex employees, uh, Cassian Chavaria, says that McAfee paid to have Fall killed. Um, so Is that, that's the neighbor who the dog ki- the dog, dog yeah. poisoner. Uh, McAfee has since denied this, saying that the filmmaker Burstein, uh, who made the Gringo Doco, paid them to make the accusa- accusations on camera. Even saying that he told them they should take the money and say whatever she asked them to. She's like, he apparently he goes, uh, Cashy and his ex employee called him and said that she's offering me twelve grand to say something, and he goes, yeah. I told him, take it, 12 grand, that's great, say whatever she wants. <laughs> that's a good deal. <laughs> that's a good deal. That's how he tells it afterwards. It's business, baby. Uh, and then McAfee, uh, after that, released videos of Xavier area. That's not right. And others saying uh, that they did, in fact, lie. Burstein has since said that she's spoken Chavaria and others who told her that they only made these new videos as they were paid by McAfee. Yeah. But oh. McAfee has denied this. Of course. So it's just like they keep going backwards and forwards saying, no, they paid them to say this. There's videos of them contradicting themselves. 
Both of them say that the other side. Yeah, it's pretty convoluted and confusing. Mm. Uh, McAfee has remained in the media spotlight since um, he since his return to America in August 2015. He was pulled over in Tennessee near where he was now living with his wife Janice. The cop believed he was drunk, but McAfee says he was just high on Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, officer. I'm just pinging. There's a vi- <laughs> th- th- You know, the, a lot of American cops have the videos. And yeah. I, uh, this video is public. You can watch it. And in the video of the arrest, um, McAfee's there. He comes out of his car in a hoodie and he goes, I'm John McAfee. You've probably read about me living here. And the cop goes, yeah, I don't know who you are. Oh, he did a don't you know who I am and then. <laughs> but like he didn't, he didn't even let anybody speak first. He just started with, this is who I am. But, and then McAfee's like, really? The surprise that he... Hadn't oh, heard of him. And yeah. he's standing there with his hand behind his hands behind his back cuffed. And he starts going, I'm the guy who was accused of murder in Belize. Then I ran oh to Guatemala. And the cop goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is pretty weird. He's like fully nonchalant and he's telling him all this. He's like, the FBI are probably going to be interested in me. You probably should call him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... All right, All right mate. He's like, oh, really? FBI? And then there's footage in the car and the guy's like, oh, so you're still working in antivirus stuff? <laughs> this is having this making, real chilled out combo. Making combo with the guy who just said, yeah, I'm wanted by several governments. <laughs> I'm accused of four murders in Central America. Oh, yeah, so you're still working in antibiotics? Or? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, the yoga stuff anymore? Yeah, yeah, how you doing? Uh, my wife and I have just gotten into yoga and I tell yeah. you what, I was sceptical. Yeah, right, but but I've been feeling just like a, a sense of calm. Yeah, sleep my like a baby flexibility, now. I, cannot t- I couldn't touch my toes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look at me now. Just let's pull over. I'm going to show you my show you. downward <laughs> facing dog. Yeah. And uh, look at that. Look at that. How deep in there mm. I'm getting. Mm. I can feel it in my hamstrings, but also in my heart. Mm. Heartstrings. Mm, namaste. So, uh, so he ended up, he got done for this. He lost his license for drink driving. Um, <laughs> He's like, He's Xanax driving. Xanax. Yeah. But he had, there's a lot of footage with him being interviewed by the ABC guy. He's just sitting in the back with the journalist and his wife Janice is driving around. So he was he wasn't put out too much by that. Um, around that time, he ran for president of the United States. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you might have heard of me. I'm running for president. I've uh, won it from four murders in uh, Belize. What? <laughs> uh, so do you, do you know the Libertarian Party? It's it's like one of the bigger minor parties over there, and there's a Libertarian bit of a libertarian movement in australia as well yeah david linehelm they're the ones yeah. that all about small government yeah and you know um no welfare and that sort of stuff and he came really close but ultimately came second in in the race um the guy who ended up winning the libertarian uh, vote i think i think i already got about three percent of the national vote which you, you don't hear it because it's pretty much a their system is it's it's first past the post or whatever right it's it's I've, oh, it's been a while since I did politics, but it's the basically two parties. Basically, if you there's not unlike here, we've got um, preferences mm. come into effect. They if you you basically throw on your vote away, much like that Kang and um, that Kang episode and of Simpsons when Kang and Kodos yeah, are the two. It's a two party. You're gonna have to vote <laughs> for one of us. <laughs> but what if I decide to vote for a third party? <laughs> <laughs> throw your vote away. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, <laughs> This has been Simpsons Heavy today. <laughs> More like Simpsons Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so he ran for president. He also heads up uh, MGT Capital, which is a company that invests in cybersecurity. So he's sort of come full circle back into cybersecurity. He talks about that a lot. He's kind of an in-demand speaker now. He'll speak at big conferences and stuff. There's footage of him, you know, with tie on, what? talking in front of... How old is he now? Uh, he's in his he would be in his eighties, forty five. So oh damn, eighty four. If, if I'm stop doing public speaking. Uh, in two thousand and seven, I just don't want to see old people out and about. Right, just yeah, stay in your house. Okay, I gotta tell you, he's mid seventies. <laughs> okay, mid seventies. That's what I said. That's what I meant. Forty five. So it's fifty five plus nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be ninety, ninety hundred. <laughs> 150? I think he's 412. He's probably the oldest man to ever live. Yeah, I read some. Someone said he was an octogenarian or whatever, and I, I, I took that on. All right, I didn't pull out the he's calculator. Negative 76. Well, he tell you. So 
if you use the McAfee virus thing, is he still getting any kickbacks from that? Or is that completely separate to him now? I think he fully sold his stake out. That's what he got the hundred million for. Oh right, okay. Yeah. But they still use his name. Yeah, and I mean he still uses his name as well, right? Yeah. I mean it's wild that they would still want to use his name. Yeah. But that's I guess what that's I mean. kind of all they've they've got in a way. Yeah, branding, and most people probably don't realise that he's accused yeah. of all this stuff. I had no idea. No. I didn't know McAfee was a person. No. Nah. Didn't know any of this. Um in 2017, News Limited published an article titled, Has Notoriously Paranoid Software Inventor and Former Fugitive John McAfee Finally Lost His Mind? Finally. It, That's really? a long he- long headline. Yeah, they really are. They like to write the entire article in there. And this is, so this is just from a couple of years ago. I'll, I'll read the first part of this article that um, inspired the headline. <laughs> As John McAfee's wife Janice tells it, she was having sex with her husband in the early hours of September 4 in their Tennessee home Brag. when McAfee's notoriously <laughs> aggressive dogs started barking madly. I'm guessing these are new dogs. Minutes later, the no, legendary... Matt, it's the dead dogs. Oh, my God. <laughs> he did find those strange Stop. plants. Yeah. It's night time here, Jess. Oh, I won't sleep. Spooky. Zombie dogs. Nah, that's cool. I'd love for them to live on those dogs. Of course. They always do in our hearts. So the dogs started barking. Minutes later, the legendary 71-year-old antivirus software inventor and former fugitive was firing bullets into the walls and ceiling of their bedroom. <laughs> okay. Are they still having sex? Yeah, are we still talking about the sex? Or? Is she on top of him and he's just firing a gun? <laughs> I'd like to think so, That yes. would be incredible. Uh, McAfee- Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. Let's get back to it, baby. McAfee thought he heard movement in the crawl space under our bedroom in the attic. Janice McAfee uh, would later recall in a statement to the FBI. He then fired his gun into both areas. The commotion woke US Army turned security guard Alex Handrick, who lived below the couple in a basement apartment. So, so I'm I'm picturing this house by itself. They're the only people around. There's someone living in below them. <laughs> yeah, he's hearing a lot of stuff happening in that attic. <laughs> what, Dave? Everything all right up there, John? Or? <laughs> it also says that Janice is 34 at that stage. So somewhere on. Okay. Right. I did not imagine her as no. that young throughout this whole piece. But he does like them young. But she's. Above the legal age of consent. Yeah. She could have a kid who's above the legal age of consent. She's a grandma compared to his previous girlfriends. So, really, he's matured. <laughs> uh, so, he's firing the guns. The commotion wakes up the US uh, Army man yep. below. Uh, who's a 20-year-old man, Mr. Hendrick, grabbed his assault rifle and legged it upstairs to find McAvee, stark naked, but for an ammunition belt slung around his hips, <laughs> pumping bullets into the living room ceiling. Was he wearing that or did he put the belt on? <laughs> Sorry, one second. He had a knock at the door. <laughs> Sorry, let me put my belt on. Because he's standing there. I'm imagining Obviously. him standing there with ammunition and also a raging boat. Oh, I was also thinking he's full erect. <laughs> yeah. And was he wearing the belt during sex or did he just go, give us a sec? <laughs> Clip it on and just start firing. <laughs> I think he's wearing it during sex. And then the army man, is that like an employee of his or does, they, does he just I th- live there? I think he just... Oh, yeah, good question. Is he a security I, guard? I assumed employee. Right, maybe it is. You think he's just a neighbour. Like, but then why is he telling journalists about what he found? Oh, yeah. It feels like more I mean, of an eyewitness account. You see something like that and you've got to tell someone. you got to tell. I saw my boss standing there, Starkers. raging erection, and he was wearing a... <laughs> Bullet belt. Sorry, I've said too much, I think. Oh, <laughs> boss, am I okay, was I okay to say? Yeah, oh God. Yeah, yeah, I was fully erect. Because I reckon... Yeah, and uh, tell him how big it was. <laughs> the guy that you've just seen shooting at walls and ceilings, he's the guy you want to annoy, especially if you yeah. live below him. True. Yep. Okay, so what happened? Well, that's sort of that's the, it. That's it. He just thought he heard something. Yeah, I guess he got a plaster in the next day and... Oh, imagine Amazing. that. It was nothing. Yeah, it was just he was shooting at shadows, basically. He got the plaster in the next day, still wearing the uh, bullet bullets around. Still his Still raging waist. boner. Oh, so once I mean, once you shoot that many bullets off, it, it takes a while. <laughs> it takes a while to go away. Speaking from experience. <laughs> Please like, stop speaking from experience. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing like it. <laughs> Yeah. Firing a gun to a crawl space. You talking wait, which gun are we talking about? Are we talking about your actual gun or your flesh skin? Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Just flesh gun. I was gonna say skin, skin. rifle. 
<laughs> Which That's is good worse. Too. No, I like that. Flesh gun. That's fun. Oh, skin rifles. Skin good. Rifles. Is that my next show? <laughs> Um, anyway, that's basically the end of my report. There's so like, uh, this is one of those ones where he just lives such a wild life. Yeah. Any of these things are hectic. Um, he's done allegedly so many bad things. He does sound allegedly terrible. Uh, but I, I'm just, I'm googling him and searching him and stuff. You know, how in Google news results will come up. He's in the news every day. Every, you know, I was reading about him over the last week or so, and. Every day there'd be news, uh, new news reports about him. I've just, I just googled wow. him a few days ago, and he's the, here are the first three headlines that came up. Three different stories <laughs> about him all on the same day. Uh, first one was McAfee offers to build Cuba's first cryptocurrency. <laughs> okay, have they asked for it? Yeah. Second one, John McAfee announces the McAfee World Trade Competition for crypto traders. Uh, it's too many. That's that, a confusing That sentence. headline sounds like it's been generated by like an auto <laughs> generator. Third one was, I'll fucking bury you. McAvey vows to expose corrupt US officials and CIA agents if disappeared. Oh. If he was disappeared. I guess so. I've never oh. heard a word used like that. If, in, if in, disappeared. In brackets also, um, would you like me to make you a cryptocurrency? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's big into crypto now. Wow. He would be. Uh, and then his, and fi- very finally, um, his Twitter is also maybe worth a look. Oh, so he's, he's actually running it himself. I think so, yeah. Brilliant. And he posts videos and stuff of himself. Um, he's currently campaigning for the 2020 presidential election oh as well. Um, and there was a, he posted a video on his Twitter uh, earlier this year. Potentially from international waters. Um, oh, Dave! Oh, I'm so keen because he's on he's on a boat and he and the um, caption is, "The McAfee 2020 campaign is as of this day in exile. I'm being charged with using cryptocurrencies in criminal acts against the U.S. government. More videos coming shortly. Stay tuned." And have we had any more videos since? There's an well, I haven't. I didn't follow up with that. Uh, there were plenty of videos of him on a boat. He looks like he just looks. So he's, he's currently being charged with something. Can, why is he allowed to run for a political campaign? I imagine that he could not do it from exile. No. But I mean, he also couldn't. He just he can't. You can't do it without backing from one of the major parties. It'd be like Trump becoming president. It just won't happen. Yeah, it's, it's a, crazy. It's a bit of a joke. Yeah, everyone's just like, "Lol, what?" <laughs> uh. Shout out to all the Trump fans out there. Um, also, this is the one that uh, one of the one of the guys who suggested this is a topic um, put in their note. Fabian? Uh, was it, I don't think it was Fabian, but it was one of the one of those great men, and uh, they pointed me in this direction. He had a tweet late last year saying, "I'm just going to read it. I can't explain it. I'll just read it." <laughs> Whale fucking, no <laughs> joke. Each year on Feb first. In the Molokai channel, a few men compete in the world's only whale fucking contest. (laughs) Humpback whales are easy to fuck for a second or less. World record, 31 seconds. I competed once. Also, almost got my ribs crushed. Stick with ostriches. What? I don't know. I mean, it's obviously a bit. I just, uh, it's like, it's a pretty wild bit. And then he he, uh, tweeted again saying... Enough of the whale fucking is non-consensual bullshit. A humpback whale weighs 70,000 pounds, is 50 feet long, can dive more than a quarter mile, and can crush ships with a single swipe of its tail. If a human manages to fuck one, <laughs> you, damn, you damn well better believe it's consensual. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, he's back run, to, back running to for president. Ostriches. And yeah, just give, just go. If you can't handle fucking a humpback whale, try an ostrich, you pussy. <laughs> you could possibly be the only one who could tweet more bizarrely than Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean that's a whole nother level. For that is, Trump. yeah. <laughs> the easy to fuck for one second or less. <laughs> oh my god. So World it, records. were any of these the things that you they found were not funny? The things. Did okay, you come across a story involving him and a hammock? Oh, yes. Yes, that was his girlfriend's told that story about cutting a hole in the hammock. Mm-hmm. 
I just um, heard that anecdotally before. What did he so do? So he, so the, his, you know, the harem of girlfriends in yeah. the Belize, um, they were asked about, you know, their sexual activities. Apparently what he got them all to do was cut a, he cut a hole in a hammock and then he got them to lie on it and shit into his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you can see why I remembered that, that fact about him. <laughs> one of them, they asked one of them, they're like, did he ever like have... You know, more classic type <laughs> sex. And she's like, oh, no, he wasn't into any of that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, mean, it probably is an oversight that I didn't put that I into mean, the report. The idea of just someone thinking about the logistics of it and then thinking, a hammock, <laughs> a hammock. Yeah, perfect, because the, the perfect position to be into shit is lying down. Yeah, but like <laughs> gravity really helps you in that, though. You know what I mean? Oh. The been man, doing it all wrong. The man's a, you <laughs> the gotta man, lie down. The man's a problem solver. Yeah. You get yeah, because you never. That, I mean, that's why when people say they shut the bed, yeah, people just don't say it. It doesn't happen. Nah, you might wet the bed, sure, but shitting the, shitting bed. the bed. You're lying down. What do you? How'd you do that? Squatting on your bed. <laughs> why? What do you got a hammock on top of your bed <laughs> with a hole uh, cut in it? That is beautiful. Oh, so that was what I... Okay, hey, to yeah, each their is. own, you know? That's fine. No judgment, but not for me. Yeah, Actually, that's nah, a no from bit me. of judgment I mean, on that one. I mean, no, I mean, no judgment, but I reserve my right to laugh at your hammock-based yeah. sex, sex act because that is pretty wild. And I like, yeah, did any kind of, you know, penetrative sex? No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Yucky. Oh, God, that <laughs> made him feel ill. <laughs> that's gross. I suggested it once and um, he didn't talk to me for a week. <laughs> I learned my lesson. I just went back to shitting in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, he was like, that's the stuff. I mean, you don't want to kiss that man. No, not at all. Well, Matt, that was um, illuminating. Also fantastic that they all separately said I was his favourite. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. <laughs> After shitting in his mouth. Yeah. Yes, mm. like, I gave him the good stuff. Yeah, that I'd, I'd block that out, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, for me, that's... Basically, all I knew about him that he was the virus guy and that he um, copped it in the mouth. Well, he's yeah, he's he's done it. Done any? Do they ever interview him about it? No, he he doesn't talk about that. Um, he doesn't like talking about Belize that much. But other he, than that, they were all legal. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Did we mention that? Um, he gets up to walk out at one point. Of oh, an interview yeah. with that ABC interview, he strikes me as the dramatic He's walkout like, type. I said no more, Belize. You you're not playing by the rules we set down. And the voiceover is, we didn't set any rules before. <laughs> <laughs> is it Ron Howard doing it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there were no rules. <laughs> <laughs> there were no rules. That's yeah. Great. So that um, uh, that was voted on by the Patreon. Uh, oh, fantastic! That's, that's and well. it was a landslide. Really, I put up four banging topics. Right, like file app, which I put up nearly every time I put a vote up now, and it no always comes wants, last. No one wants <laughs> I try to reword it so it sounded more. You know, who killed Australia's most famous racehorse is what I titled it this time. Still came last. Nah, we see through your shit. I th- I have the feeling that maybe he's much more famous in America if people are writing articles about him every day. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, a bit of like a, a weirdo cult figure that gets written about all the maybe, time over there. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's why it was a landslide because we do have a lot of American Patreons. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, there was uh, they all the things I put up did include death because we hadn't. I don't think we'd done any death for a while. And then I do it and I remember why. It's like what? Why do I put myself through this? <laughs> Through this pain. You try to block out the yeah, try and block out the fuck things and try and think of oh the whales. That's well, pretty funny. funny. Also people uh, um probably think that you've talked enough about horses lately. So right. fell up on the back burner for a few more months. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even Get put that into the cycle. <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah, give right. It, give it some time. Yeah, well, it probably would have got some people to vote for it and others to go, let's just leave Matt and the horses <laughs> yeah, yeah. for a bit. You've done enough damage <laughs> to the equine community. Yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> so uh, that brings us to the end of the report, but that brings us to everyone's favourite section of the show. Now we've got this bit out of the way. Here we go. It is the fact, quote, or question section. And the way this works, Dave, I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, uh, you can get me su- up to speed. Support the show on Patreon, which is, you might not have understood what I was talking about there. Patreon is a 
a site that you can uh, sign up and support us on by giving us some sort of money. That's right. You support mm. like uh, mostly online creators, YouTubers, uh, people with podcasts, artists, musicians, that kind of thing. And we come under the podcast category. And, uh, and artists. Oh, yeah. Oh. Thank you. My goodness. My goodness, yes. And uh, yeah, if you like what we do, because we put out a free show every single week and haven't missed one in... Uh, closing in on four years now, you can uh, go to patreon.com slash do go on pod and you give us enough money to keep the show happening, but also in exchange you get rewards. Hooray! To say thanks for your support. That's right. And uh, there are heaps of rewards. You can get two bonus episodes a month. That's a big one that people love that no one else can hear. You're part of a Facebook group if you'd like to be on Patreon where we uh, talk about stuff with uh, other Patreon supporters. You get to help vote for the topics. Mm-hmm. Um Anyone can suggest topics. You don't have to be a patron for that, but uh, patrons vote on two of the three topics that we do. And yeah, not it's not always a landslide like this. Often it is really yeah. close votes. Especially with the other vote, which um, I'm doing at the moment, and I'll be putting up a topic very, very soon. And um, often it's won by literally one or two voters. So you yeah. actually have the, the power to change what we talk about. And also shout outs, which we'll get to in a minute. But of course, there's the fact quote or question, which That's what's right. that? And if you uh, sign up on the, uh, the Sydney Scheinberg Rest in Peace Deluxe Edition, and memorial level. Rest in peace, of course. They're the people that actually will be voting on my topic. Right. And they're the people that, because it's quite a small tier, there's not that many members. Yeah. You actually, make sure you vote because. You have a, yeah. Yeah, you change it. Yeah, big time. Uh, and Drew Peissner is one such uh, uh, Sydney Scheinberg level supporters. And uh, with the fact quote or question that he's given us, you also get to give us uh, a title that you go by. And Drew's given himself the title of the last lick of Los Angeles and the keeper of the lost law. Ooh. That's okay. beautiful. L O W or L A W. The law? Uh, L O R E. Oh. oh. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. The lost law. I think he's the guy who came up with two and a half men. Men, oh, men, men, right? men, men, men. Chuck men, Lorry. Men, men. Oh, Chuck Lorry. Damn. Close. Uh, In fact, I probably mention this every time he comes up, but it still blows my mind. He comes up so often. Uh, (laughs) Chuck Laurie. Co-wrote the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. I've Uh, been playing that today. Really? Musician in the 80s? I'll sing every word. Before he was a... Did he even write the bits? Because there's lines like, um, uh, they're the world's most fearsome fighting team. And then there's like the backup turtle goes, that's a fact, Jack. Yeah, I love that stuff. They're heroes in a half shell and, and they're green. green. I love l- lyrics like that. They're heroes in a half shell. We need another. We need oh. to bump this line out of it. And, and they're <laughs> green. It's <laughs> a radical rat. Yeah. <laughs> Great line. Yeah. Splinter taught them to be ninja teens. It's a radical rat. Uh, Raphael is cool but rude. Michelangelo is a party dude. Party. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Chuck, the two and a half men, uh, big bang guy, wrote... Co wrote that theme song. And Drew Parsons uh given us the longest fat quota question ever. And I think we might he might even be the one that means we have to put in a rule of, of some sort of word limit. Um <laughs> Oh god. Uh he's called it it's basically a mini report. Is he this is a fact quota a question? That's then? right. And it's well, uh but what is it? It's is it? a uh fact. A oh. James Bond fact. Uh he said sorry, he says a Bond fact. A James Bond fact. <laughs> oh, very <laughs> good. And I don't read these until the night, but I'll be interested to find out if he's found... I mean, I did a pretty extensive James Bond report yeah. a couple of years ago. Good so stuff. This is a good supplement report potentially. Uh, he how, writes... How, much, how many word counts are we looking at here? What's the word count? Uh, it's very long. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if we have time for all of that. <laughs> All right. Well, you without, let me without being rude, it seriously is like it looks like actually like it is actually rude, like I'm looking at well, like a report. Let me get stuck into it, and you can uh, start the clock. Okay. How long do you want? I don't. I don't know. What do you get? Three I'll, minutes on this. I, t- I talk very fast, so I don't know if that's true. Well, I'm going to give you ninety seconds. No, three minutes. When Ian Fleming began considering bringing Bond to the big screen in 1958, he got together with his friends Ivor Bryce and Ernest Cuneo. Incredible names. And a screenwriter uh, Bryce knew named Kevin McClory. 
and they began to write a James Bond screenplay later called Longitude 78 West. Though Fleming and McClory got on well initially, McClory's poorly received movie, which was released during the writing process of the Bond screenplay, turned Fleming sour on McClory and had Fleming doubting his abilities. As Fleming became less intrigued by the project, he began spending less time working on it, and as a result, McClory brought on a second screenwriter, Jack Whittingham. To help finish the script, the film now with a completed script was to be produced under the Xanadu Productions banner, formed by Fleming, McClory, Bryce and Cuneo. But due to budgetary issues, the production was forced to fold. Though Longitude 78 West was never made into a film, Fleming reused the story in a later James Bond novel, Thunderball, which was released in 1961. I think I did cover a lot of this in the episode, but this is going into greater detail. McClory and Whittingham both received an advanced copy of copy of Thunderball and were ne- immediately Thunderball, the great Tom Jones theme. Thunderball. Uh, one of my favourite, absolute favourites. And then uh, remade, I believe, as uh, Never Say Never Again. Oh, well, that's not skip ahead. And were immediately angered to find out that their collaborative story was being sold as the sole product of Fleming's imagination. And for that reason, the two took Fleming to court later that same year. Though the case was settled in Fleming's favour, the book was allowed to be published. The door was left open for McClory to visit the case, and he did just that in 1963. One minute left. The case, which <laughs> lasted three weeks and did not see Fleming attend due to a heart attack he incurred at the same time, ended with an out-of-court settlement by Fleming at the suggestion of uh, Bryce. McClory got the literary and film rights to the screenplay, while Fleming kept the rights to the novel under the condition that future prints would have to acknowledge that the story was based on the screen treatment of Kevin McClory, Jack Whittingham, and the author. Because of the nuanced nature of the deal, when Thunderball was eventually adapted for the silver screen, with Sean Connery playing the legendary spy, McClory received sole producer credit for the film under the Eon Productions banner, while regular series producers Albert R. Broccoli and Harry Saltzman received executive producer credits. Further complicating the matter, part on of Eon's deal with McClory allowed him ten to produce his own version of the screenplay uh, as long as he did not release within 10 years of Eon produced variant and in, clo- in accordance with this deal McClory didn't All work right. on thanks man I'm going to have to cut you off there and uh, stop you but thank you for that uh, fact let me just say that's a fact <laughs> it is a fact I got about halfway through it but there I think basically it ends up being um, there's an, another version called Never Say Never Again uh, which McClory got to make and it's sort of like an outside of the canon right. movie basically the same story and it's also Sean Connery also Sean Connery which and I think the the name is a nod to him because he said he'd never play Bond again and his and wife t- apparently said I guess you'll say I guess you'll never say never again right and uh, yeah he got him on and he sort of played it was a different kind of Bond a lot of people love it it's sort of got mixed reviews but um, because he was sort of playing an older Bond how have you now talked for another minute? I was trying to sum up the <laughs> what I think the rest of it will be. But we'll never know. Never know. Well, maybe um I'll I'll maybe I'll just I'll post that mini report somewhere. Yeah, great. That's a good idea. So people can Pop read it on Facebook. It. Yes, I'll put it on Facebook so people can read the rest of it. Thank you so much, Drew Peisner. Thanks, Drew. Thank you. Thanks Drew. for putting in that much effort. I'm so sorry Dave rudely cut us off. <laughs> oh, sorry, I feel like that was you and me there together. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. And I'm sorry to Drew. But uh, we may have to put a limit on it next time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like what five sentences or something. What do you reckon? Look, I am i don't want to become some sort of a word efficiency uh, tyrant. Happy to add that to my portfolio here at Digimon <laughs> Productions. That's your new... If you get to give yourself a title, it's word efficiency tyrant. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Damn right. Words fear me. Well, that brings us to our, our other favourite Patreon segment of the show where we get to thank a few of our great supporters. Well, yes. let me just uh, check how long their names are and if they're too long, we will not be able to thank them. <laughs> <laughs> We've run out of time. <laughs> but there's, no, there's no more tape in this machine. You do have to pop off uh, tonight, right, Dave? So I guess we should keep it efficient, but I think we should give each of these six people the time they deserve. All right, of Dave? Of course. Please. Right, so, if they had to have someone shit in their mouths, what? <laughs> this is why we let <laughs> Jess uh, come up with the games well, that we play for I the names. I was thinking we either name their first company or their first three jobs. So, you know how he did so, like so many different things? What about, okay, I love that. Just to make it a little bit quicker, for example. Sure. What if we say... What they're doing now, what we think they're doing now, and what they what if they had a an absolute midlife crisis, yeah, what would they do? 
Okay. Like because you know how he gave up his tech stuff and right, became okay. a yogi. Now to then. Okay. Future. So what are you saying? You're saying this is yeah, their job what, now, but then midlife crisis yeah, they what, do this. Yeah, what, what would their U-turn right. be? Yeah. What's okay, their, great. their plan B? Okay, great. Well, can I kick it off uh, by thanking from Chesterfield in Mo, Minnesota? Missouri. Missouri. Is that right? be, I think it is for some reason. I'll be Even though dead in the cold, cold <laughs> ground. Before I recognize Missouri. Uh, so Mizzou. Mizzou is it's the Oz- somewhere near the Ozarks. It ah. is Missouri because it's always like, why isn't it Montana? Anyway, go <laughs> ahead. Uh, and I'd love to thank from Chesterfield, Missouri, Benjamin Ogier or Ooh. Ogier. Ogier. Currently. I think it's Ogier. Ogier. It's a great name. Uh, because they're the uh, world rally champion, Sebastian uh, Ogier. Oh, it's a great name. Well done. And Benjamin. Benjamin currently works as a. Baker. Baker. Gets so. up very, very early. Super he, early. He doesn't want to do that anymore. What would no. he rather do? Rather work in after school care. Oh, great. You get to sleep in now. Afternoon shift. His midlife crisis. Yep. He goes into education. That's yep. nice. Okay. He just thinks, you know what? I'm sick of baking. Yeah. I want to pass on this knowledge. Yeah, you want Bakers to- have to get up early too. Yep. Now you get to sleep in. <laughs> Notoriously bad counters though. So yeah, hopefully he's not right. teaching maths in after school <laughs> care. I'm telling you, it's 13. <laughs> uh, Benjamin Ogier in Benjamin Missouri. Yeah. Oh, I want to go to Missouri. I want to visit the, some of those Ozark lakes. See if uh, see if I can make some sort of deals with. Uh, I've I've seen the show Ozark and I oh. remember things like that. It seems like a cool place. Cool. I'd also like to thank, if I may, Please. from Vancouver in Canada. Oh, Canada. Connor Dieball. Connor. That sounds like all one word, doesn't it? Connor die ball. Connor die ball. Connor die ball. Connor die ball. Well, my I think- uh, my cousin in law is named Ricky die ball, and his nickname is Dry Balls. Very very good. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> very good stuff. That is. I didn't come up. I can't claim it. No, don't. but I get to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> dry balls. I okay. think Connor is currently working as a postie or a uh, mailman. They make all them over there. Yep. What uh, what would his uh, sea change be? Pilot, pilot. Oh, yeah. oh from that the, is a genuine sea change. That is from the uh, I'm gonna take to the skies. land to the skies. Yep, still delivering mail. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a mail pilot. Dave. I'll, uh, <laughs> keep watching the skis. <laughs> I mean skies. <laughs> it's funny because I was actually going to say flight attendant first, oh, and then I changed to pilot. Are you two in sync? Always. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. Can I thank some people too? Yeah, that'd be so good. I'd like to thank from Bellwood, Pa, Pennsylvania. That's right. Not far from uh, the Golden Mile. The Golden Mile. The man with two. Pittsburgh to Gary. (laughs) Yes. We're going to come on to drive that Golden Mile. Two first names. I'd like to thank John Luke. Oh, Johnny Luke. A couple of biblical names there. Yeah. A couple of gospelian names. And what kind of job do you think John Luke has? Uh, bookshop. Runs it? Yeah. Works in it? Yeah. Owns it? Both. All. He's an entre- entrepreneur. He's a uh, Hugh Grant in Notting Hill type. Uh, oh. Foppish. He's foppish. Right, so he's more Hugh Grant than Bernard Black then. Yes. So we like him. He's nice. Well, he seems okay. Can we, he's an American. Can we give him a reference he understands? Oh, okay. Well, um, you don't know Notting Hill? Educate yourself on some Richard Curtis. The man is a he's a master. Who's a, of who's the a famous rom-com. book owner in America? Um, is there any? The librarian. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> because Australian. John isn't. A, he doesn't own a bookstore for very long. Oh right. He goes on to do something else, doesn't he? Garbage man. Garbage ah. man. Get out amongst it. That's what they call rubbish collectors in America. So well mm-hmm. done for speaking his language. Yeah. I love that. I said, do you speak my language? John Luke. This and one. He just smiled and put a Vegemite sandwich in the bin because that's what his job was. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, it was a moldy Vegemite sandwich. Thank like, you, John Luke. I like that as a as a tree change as well. Not a tree change, but a life change. It's sort of up in the morning, you're done. Yeah. You, you, you've got all afternoon and, and to the evening. Not yeah. all afternoon. They obviously work. In the afternoon, but uh, I don't think they work. At but on the, the grind, like the bloody people in the rat way, raise up in uh, the financial quarter. Yeah, not, not, not like right. those clowns in Canberra. Yeah. Where they're never working. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? 
Thank well, you to John. Well, for John's benefit, I've Googled movies set in a library. I thought that might be easier. Great. Uh, these are the top five on IMDb. The Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lesmore. Okay, Number I need two. real ones, please. Number two, The Librarian Quest for the Spear. Number three, The Librarian Return to King Solomon's Mines. And number four, The Librarian 3, The Curse of the Judas Chalice. Okay, so, okay, so that didn't really help. No, and they, so there's got to be bigger... John, have I put them... In? There's also The Mummy at number seven. Okay, great. What about Giles from The Buffy? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> franchise, uh, The Buffy the franchise. The Buffy franchise, thank you. Well That's done. Oh. <laughs> 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 From the Buffy. It was quite a way past saying it when I my brain was like, you no, mucked someone up there. there. <laughs> I've got an exciting uh, name here next. Oh, police shit. I'd like to thank From Toowoomba in Queensland, that here in Australia. I would like to thank Jonathan Lithgow. No. no. You don't think. It must be. Not Mr. Henderson himself. It oh. has to be. Oh, my God. I'm Dick. such a big. From the Third Rock I'm himself. a big yeah. Lith fan. He's amazing. We have talked about a spin-off show, obviously, uh, uh, Phrasing the Bar, but we've also, Jess Off Pod, talked about a Lithgow show called Do Lithgow On. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, I was about to make that pun, so I'm so happy you yeah. went there. That is fantastic stuff. So, obviously... I've never heard that you say that, so I I don't know. Did it, I say it to you? Maybe I said it to someone else. It was me. Maybe. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'd prefer that. Who else that. are you talking to? People on Primates? What? I don't know if I'd prefer that or the Phrasing the Bar. They're both, I, they're think, both I think I think I probably well. would enjoy the John Lithgow one more, but we are so committed to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fair enough, fair enough. We've only it's only fifty movies. We can do it. We're too deep. That's also going to be. I think Brendan Fraser is also a delight. Oh two delightful well, American actors. The Mummy. I just me- mentioned one of my exactly. all-time favorite films. I've already done two Lithgow uh, films for Primates, including Harry and the Hendersons. Well, speaking of, so and obviously one other that I've blank and blank Obviously, in. Jonathan Lithgow is currently a world-renowned actor. Yes, but. Did you know this about him? Also, writes children's songs. Really? And he d- he's performed with an orchestra to uh, perform singing his children's songs. Are song. we saying that's his second career then? Yeah, sure. Cool. All right, so Jonathan Lithgow and Toowoomba <laughs> was an actor, but now sings to children. Jeez, yeah. that must be boring for him to get that. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's, let's yeah, assume. Yeah, I bet he, he was like, oh, that other person got garbage man. <laughs> I got world-renowned oh, actor. I want a garbage man. All right. Well, John Lithgow, if you are a different Jonathan Lithgow, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you were a house painter. Oh, okay. But now you are... Portrait painter. Yes. Oh. Big. Yeah. He swapped his big brush for his little brush. <laughs> mm, that's right. Uh, from house paints to pastels. <laughs> yeah, he works with pastels. Yeah. And he does a great job. He does. I I've mean, seen some of his work. On screen, he paints with... His, his performance is a masterpiece. Oh, he paints with a fine brush on screen. Yeah. Dave, would so. you also like to thank some people? I would like to thank. Thank you so much. I would like to thank from uh, Mount Airy in MD. Is that Maryland? Do we get that a lot? MD, Doogie Howser. Oh, let's look that up. Live on here. Mount Airy. MD. <laughs> It is Maryland. Oh, great to have you on. But we don't have many people from that fantastic area of the world. So I'd like to thank, from Mount Airy, Maryland, Taylor Michael. Taylor, oh, Taylor Michael. Michael. Well done. Great I just work that, that sounds name. like a 90s celebrity to me. Yeah. Taylor Michael. Taylor Dane. George Michael. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah. They were all doing it back then. Ticking all the boxes. Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Oh. Um, <laughs> Taylor Michael. I, would like oh? to think. I reckon Taylor Michael was a plumber. Yeah. Threw it all in, and yes. now Taylor Michael is. Go, give uh, me something, Matt. Life guidance coordinator. Yes. A careers counselor? Life coach? It's a bit of both, actually. Yeah, I reckon <laughs> the spanning. New, spanning yeah. the genres. Yeah. So overlooks a team of life yes. guiders. Oh, project management. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Good stuff. A Thank small you. team or? A small team. I yeah. love that. Mm. Yeah. Love that. Just a baker's dozen. <laughs> uh, Taylor Michael, thank you so much. Taylor from Maryland. Michael from Maryland. Great to have you on board. Awesome. I love your Thanks, state Taylor. flag. Well done. What are we looking at? Right. Guy's got a couple of puzzle pieces in the bottom <laughs> left and top right, and then uh, some checkers in the top left and bottom right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's about as attractive as it sounds. And, um, <laughs> we wish you well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Taylor Michael. All right, finally, I, I really like to liked thank, it. Bringing, bring, it, bring it all back home now to Brunswick West in Victoria. Just I would like to the thank corner. Lucy. Browning. Oh, Lucy. Thank you, Lucy Browning. Lucy Browning, another fantastic name. Love 
your support, your local support. So, I think that Lucy used to, Jess, what did she used to do? Used to, oh my God, um, deliver crumpets. Oh, wow. Okay. She worked for a crumpet making company. Yep. That is deliver- a genuine job that my one of my best friends has. As the delivery I panicked driver? and I thought... Delivery driver. She makes crumpets. Is your friend's name Lucy? No. This Lucy could very well be my friend if she and I would just open up to one another. Yeah. Well, well. She's got to deliver crumpets to your heart. So but that's what she used to do, but she's thrown it all in. No, sea change, tree done, change, done with life change. Matt, midlife crisis, what's, what are you doing? Lifeguard. Yes. Yeah. I like I'm it. I'm always waiting. You won't get me, me out of this. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Thank you. To Lucy there. Thanks, Hanging Lucy. With the Hoff. Thanks to everyone who uh, who supports us on Patreon. Oh, thank you so much. It means a lot to us. It, it means the world to us. It really does. I love each and every one of you. And your names are always the best. You have such good names. Just another fantastic bunch of names. Yeah, good on them. A baker's half dozen there. Oh, thank you so much. No, sorry. A mathematician's half dozen there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard mm. of that before, but I like it. That's a good joke. <laughs> Should we, end there? Should we end there on that good joke? Yeah, end on a good we joke, I reckon. Got there. That's Let's a end of, on the middle. That's a, that's a radio rule is um, end on the laugh. A nice one. And then discuss it. Yeah, in the next talk break. <laughs> yeah. Text in if, when you've laughed. <laughs> 0439 757 555. That's oh. not my phone number. That's a Triple J phone number. Yeah, right. Just in case somebody but was like, there, that on the stupid time. idiot just gave away a phone number. Well. Um, so I guess we should say once again, if, if people are looking to come see us live, we're going to be in Brisbane, Perth and Sydney coming up. Yeah. Please come along. We, um, you know, we book it in and then we just hope that the people that say they're going to come will come. Yeah. The people who have, have, have campaigned for us to come. Yeah. We're like, oh, can, can you come? And okay. Yeah. Well, great. We'll come. And then it, oh, hopefully that you'll day. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I don't actually want to come. Yeah. So please, please. Oh, I just want the option. I, I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, yuck, no. And it's always nice when people buy tickets early too because then we go, oh, great, it's going to be great. We don't have to cancel it. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have to cancel this. We actually ourselves. get to go. Yay. So, so uh, check it out, dogoonpod.com for all links to our live shows. Also, the merchandise that Jess mentioned, those T-shirts are now yes. on sale. Uh, you can uh, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at dogoonpod and there's links also on the website. Also, uh, YouTube channel. There's a few live videos going up. Yes. Um, mm. And that's real cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really You put cool. Matt on the spot there and uh, he panicked. Uh, let's not forget the uh, mathematicians half dozen. Yeah. Good stuff, Matt. Thank you. You can tap out now. You've done your job. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, get in contact. Do go on pod at gmail.com is also another way to hang out and suggest a topic. You can do that through the website as well. Anyone can do that. And uh, yeah, you tell us why we should do it and then we'll shout out to you when we inevitably get through them all. Mm. Love that. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm ready for bed. Okay, I'm so well, glad this is my house. I know. Well, we're all getting, we're all getting into Matt's bed tonight. So yeah. um, we better wrap this up. So Get into our jammies. Until next week, I will say good night. Later. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.